bass sounds wicked, mate. Oh, I love this bass. Are you still in love with the bass? Yeah. <laughs> I love I I play it, I pick it up probably more than I pick anything else up. Yeah. It's slinky. I gig with it. I, lo I love it. I absolutely have you, love it. Have you played with another bass since you had it? Like gig like it? Like a gig? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I did a gig. I did a gig on this Spectre that I have right over here. Yeah. I did a, I've done gigs on the, uh, the Voren Saku short scale that's behind me here. I have a hollow body that I've gigged with. Yes. But like straight up, like grab it. It's the one that feels like the most solid. Take it on tour. Yeah. Has, has been this actually. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So there's no internal battle about which one you should take anymore. It's like, it's, well, it depends. It depends. Right. Like the, like yeah, with your old bass is just like weeping in the corner. <laughs> just like I dusty like and shitty. <laughs> the fenders are weeping. The fenders have been sat on that shelf right Yeah, that's what I mean. The fenders, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, yeah, it's crazy. How about you? Oh, I've got no idea, dude. I'm just so cold right now. I don't know what I'm drinking this because this is cold. I'm so <laughs> cold. My nipples are like rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway. What we're here to do today. Oh man, we are here to show you some bases that I I believe are gonna be in the next giveaway. We're gonna do that. We're gonna talk about boutique bases. We're gonna talk about pros and cons of boutique bases. What even is a boutique base? Yeah, dude. Right? Our favorite boutique bases, the big list. We're gonna we have some examples. We're gonna play a little. We're gonna show you stuff. But I feel like first we got to talk about what we're giving away. We're giving away some boutique yeah. bases as well. People might not know what the heck we're on about. So like over the last five, oh five years, ha! Huh? I got it. Five <laughs> yes. years because it's the fifth year anniversary. Every single spring we do this thing called Win a Base, Build a School, where we partner with Pencils of Promise. And we, we give away a bunch of bases and off of that, off the back of that, raise a bunch of money. We partner with Pencils of Promise and then we build schools out in developing countries to help, you know, kids in those areas get into schools because there are hundreds of millions of kids that are out of school and it's just an absolute, you know, travesty. So that's what we do. Um, and we've been doing it for five years. We've built, I think, like three schools now. Unfortunately, I haven't got like a plaque in the schools that says it's from SPL. <laughs> in my mind, I was like, do we get a plaque? Do I get a picture? <laughs> like, we don't. We hey, don't. No but picture. anyway, yeah. But we built these schools and we're going to try and raise money to build another one. Um, and, and this year we're giving away, check it out, more prizes than we ever have before. More than ever. When we were kind yeah. of like ideating, throwing ideas around, <laughs> Ian was like, how about the most prizes <laughs> ever? So that's yeah. ultimately what we went with, the most prizes ever. So we've got a bunch of bases. We're going to mention them in just a minute. And then also we've got a lot of other stuff. We've got pedals and we've got free memberships. And we've got all of this other stuff as well. Yeah, um, we have cables, you, we have straps. Yeah. We, I mean, all the, all the stuff to get you started. And I mean, very cool, like really cool companies that are donating to this cause. It's incredible. Yeah. And if you want to check it out, just go to winabasebuilderschool.com. So that's winabasebuilderschool.com. But check it out. It's completely free to enter. So if you want to get you in a chance with a chance of winning this, it's totally free to enter. All you need to do is go to winabasebuilderschool.com and then enter over there. And the yeah. first one, just to just to bring it into shot here. <laughs> oh, baby. I'm giving away, where can I hold it like this? I'm giving away this F base, which is absolutely gorgeous. It is a one of one. Um, it was actually, I bought this from a um, a guy called Dave. I think, is it Dave? Sorry, Dave, if I don't get your name wrong. Anyway, he had it made for him. Um, it was the owner of Slap Store out in, um, I think they're based in Chile. And he had this bought for him. I, I saw it and I was like, I need it. So I bought it off Dave. Anyway, I'm giving it away in this giveaway. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's got this beautiful olive top. It's got all of the, you know, all of the stuff and more. It's got a ramp. It's got gold, pimpy hardware on it. And it's also, check it out. 
I've never seen an F-Base like this before, but it's got uh, maple wings. So maple wings and, oh, wow. a, yeah, and an ash block as well with a beautiful neck. All that to say, it's absolutely phenomenal. I'm giving this away. Ian, you are giving away. I am giving away. There's going to be a lull and a lull IMA4. It's not going to be this one. It's actually going to be like a super cool one-off paint job that we haven't revealed yet, but it's going to be a Mike Lull IMA4. And I was, I was just saying before we started recording this, that this is, uh, this is the bass that I reach for. Yeah. I love this instrument. It's a collaboration, it started out as a collaboration between me and Spencer Lull from Mike Lull and became what I am really proud to call like my signature bass. This is the bass when I go on tour, I grab it. When I'm going to most gigs, I grab it. I still play other things, but this bass feels like home. It's a combination of my two, two of my favorite instruments ever, a jazz bass, body, and then Thunderbird pickups. But then the neck profile is kind of a cross between a P, a J, and a Thunderbird. I could talk about this forever, but I love the instrument. Big, huge reverse headstock. It's a little bit rock and roll. It's a little bit of a middle finger, which I love just a little <laughs> bit. Just like, hey, there's something there's something wrong with this. Huh? You don't like it? Hey. <laughs> there's a little bit of that, which I like. Yeah. I love. I like. I love. Um, and the back is all painted. Can't wait for you guys to see the finish that they're doing for this giveaway. It's, and it's very, like a one well, of one as be, well, isn't it? It's a it's one like of one. One of yep. one. And it's like this super special paint job. Basically, it's got like go faster racing stripes on it. Is that the vibe? <sighs> maybe, maybe. We'll see. Will people be able to go faster? <laughs> maybe. Un undoubtedly. <laughs> yeah, undoubtedly. Yeah. And hey, yes. we're also giving away more bases as well. So we've got, Dan, I've got like a list here, by the way. So we've got the F bass, we've got the lull, we've got two Alintos, one of which you're going to be seeing today, which is insane. Um, we've got a Fender Jazz Special, and we've also got a beautiful green, racing green, uh, yes. um, Music Man Stingray, which looks absolutely gorgeous as well. So as I said, go to winnerbasebuilderschool.com and you'll be able to check out all of the prizes over there, and it is completely free to enter go do it now boutique bases dude what even is a boutique base well, and just just before we do as well just to give everybody sort of like upfront of what we're going to be getting into as well we're going to be talking about what a boutique base is we're going to be talking about the ups like what are the positives about boutique yeah. bases but also what about the negatives what about the dark side of yeah, what boutique sucks? bases and i you know transparently i will say when I was putting together the positives and the negatives, my negatives outweigh the positives. We'll have to wait until we get there. Oh, oh, yeah. And, and yeah. I, I'm yeah. sure you have a story too. I definitely do of like spending the money, getting the thing, and then having it disappoint in a way that I was unprepared for. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So stay tuned. We're going to yeah. talk about what sucks about them as well. Obviously, we love basses, right? I mean, like Scott and I are crazy about basses. Oh, dude, I've but... got all the boutique basses here. I've got like, <laughs> hey, I ain't, I ain't saying don't buy the boutique basses. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying there's pros there's, and yeah, cons. There is pros and cons. And I think mm. that the, uh, the cons are interestingly stuff that a lot of people don't talk about all the time for obvious right. reasons, you know, because sometimes it sucks to uh to talk about the negatives but we thought it'd be fun to dive into those today so we're gonna be talking about the pros we're gonna be talking about the cons and then we're also gonna be talking about sort of like what are the classic boutique bases what who are the big six then also like newcomers to the space and then also the boutique fso's you'll have to wait and see what that is the fso is yeah 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 Yeah. does anyone know what that means Ooh, i don't yeah, know what know any acronym the, yeah, means let me know but i comments. do know what that yeah. one means exactly i know that one <laughs> Um, so dude, you take it away. What do you, what do you feel is a boutique base? Well, I've got a lot of questions here and, uh, I feel like the instrument that you're holding in your lap, like I was looking at that. I'm like, Jesus, that is like the picture of boutique base. This it like checks all base. the boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, I'm going to ask you, I want your gut on this. I'm just going to ask you criteria. What makes a boutique base? Number one, is it about the price? Does price make the boutique base? Hmm. Does a boutique base have to be expensive? 
I think that given the given that boutique bases are usually made in small workshops, um, the price is just a reflection of that because it's not a mass manufactured thing. So ultimately, I don't think it needs to be expensive to be a boutique base, but just the you know the how it's built drives the price mm. up. Yeah, I love this answer. I'm gonna then that brings me to this question: Does the size of shop or amount of employees? make a boutique base. So for instance, is Fender Custom Shop not boutique? No, not. I don't think. Not. Not. <laughs> because because it's connected to Fender, because it's Fender. Yeah, yeah. So there is no So are you telling me? <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just trying to stir the controversy, dude. Um you're telling me that there is no Fender that is boutique. Yes. <laughs> hey, also, as we go, you guys, if we enrage you or we leave something out or we or you are like, yes. hold on, but wait a minute, this, please, in the comments, it's been so fun to see all the comments come in on YouTube. So listen, if you're listening to this pod audio only, that's awesome. Thank you, audio listeners. But also get over there. There's a completely different experience. You're going to get to see all these bases on YouTube in the comment section below. Please let us know. Um, what do you disagree with? I mean, obviously we yeah, love, we, yeah. we love when people are like, Hey, this is great. And, and thank you. But also like, are we wrong? We sure could be, but I like this. This is gut feeling from Scott Devine. I'm going to keep going. So I dude, love that you dude, said be, there's no Before fender. you do one, yes. one thing, just, just an ask to our audience. We don't yes. ask many things of you, right? But just to like, I've been dying. We have got a big hairy goal for our YouTube growth this year, like a big hairy goal. We really want to hit 1.5 million subscribers. And I was like diving deep down in the analytics. And I was like, 60% of the people that watch our videos aren't subscribed. 60%. And I was like, that's Whoa. too many. That's too many. It's too many. So, look, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you could click that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel, you have no idea how happy it would be, make me and Ian, but also the entire content team and team, frankly, at SBL. It's something as a team we're putting so much hard work into. And if you could click subscribe, it will honestly make a freaking day. We're checking them subscribers every single day. I embarrassingly admitted to Ian that I'm checking them more than every single day earlier. <laughs> but listen, if you could hit subscribe, I will send you a virtual hug for the next <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> Maybe more. Anyway. Wow. That's anyway, a long no, time. Yeah, it's a long time. Hit subscribe. <laughs> I, it will make my day. Um, yes. So, no, I do not think that Fender make a boutique base, um, even though they're expensive. Okay. How about this now? Can a boutique base be Fender shaped? Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. To, to the so, top of mind. Or should we get into that later? We'll get into that later, but yeah, I do okay. think they can. And so, honestly, so this I, to you, yeah. you, you feel like this, we could classify this Mike Lull IMA4 as a boutique base. I think it fits into a certain category of boutique Ooh, base. I do think we'll there's a difference, we'll right, between yeah. something like an Alembic, a Ken Smith, and something like a Lull. There's a difference. One's multi-layered, multi-laminate, like that whole thing. Yeah. And I like the like, I, I like the separating the categories. I like yeah. that. And then for like Sadowski, Lull, Alinto, yes, um, those styles of instruments are very much well. They're like Fender influenced. Does a boutique bass have to have a fancy top? No, doesn't have to. I don't think so. But it doesn't hurt, huh? It doesn't. Huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me look around. I don't know. No, because check this out. Here's like a fretless F bass. Ah, yes. Yeah, like fully boutique, no top, just a, I think it's like a, no, it's like a three piece body, I think. Anyway, all that to say that it hasn't got a fancy ass top. Okay. Um, and it's definitely a boutique. I mean, oh yeah, I see that ramp on there too and like the uh -huh. different shape. And I, how about this? Does Does a boutique bass have to omit a pick guard. No. Mm, okay. So so you're saying then that this guy here 
we could call base. this yeah. a boutique base. Maybe, and, and maybe a boutique is actually just. And please, as Ian was saying before, let us know in the comments what you think about this because we're just having this open. Co we haven't had this conversation. You know, we haven't worked out what this conversation. <laughs> we're just kind of sort of like you know going with it. Um, I think that boutique for me is kind of. Um, it's the amount of people that maybe are working on the instruments that signifies whether it's boutique or not. Maybe that's oh, it. Is is that the, well, I think, I think it's a lot of things. I, and I think the more things that you have of these, of these things we're talking about, maybe that slides you more onto the boutique scale, but it's not just like, it's not cut and dry. Although I love that you made the cut and dry with Fender. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, um, I just don't see them as boutique. Oh, right. I don't know. How about Sorry, this? Vincent. I know, like, Vincent Van Trigg, I love... Vincent is a great, not only, like, bass maker, but guitar maker, just incredible. And uh, he works for the uh, for the custom, custom shop. shop. So yeah. I do have guilt over saying that they're not. I know, like, Vincent might have just sort of, like, <laughs> spat <in>. <laughs> Vincent's <laughs> just spat coffee all over his kitchen. I'm sorry. So... But, but I know what you mean. Yeah. If you think about a shop, like if you think about a boutique clothing store, it's not H and M, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's not a big monster retailer. It's maybe a small shop that's maybe family owned, or it or it curates. It, it carries a smaller selection. When I think about boutique in a space that isn't instruments, I think about shop size and like maybe quality and price. That's yeah, you know. Yeah. Like I think about, it, it's not the stuff that you can find maybe at PMT or at Guitar Center. Um, yeah. Even though some of those places carry some boutique things, they're maybe serving a different audience that's not looking for that level of zhuzh in an instrument. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. I, can yeah, I keep dude. asking you? I got a couple more questions. Go on, hit me, dude. Hit me. Active? Do they have to be active? No. Agreed. They don't have to be active, but a lot are. But a lot, uh, are. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, a lot of them are. How about hardware? Gold hardware. <laughs> <laughs> no. no gold hardware. No gold. They don't hardware. have to have it, but a lot of them do. A lot um, of them do. <laughs> yeah. How about this? How about this? Amount of strings. No. So no. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of them have lots of strings. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so, like, if I hold this bass up, this is a this is a Ken Smith from 1985, I believe. Beautiful. This is a bass. It's a four string. Yeah. But this is a boutique bass, right? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. This is a beautiful boutique bass. Yeah. And and to me, a bass like this, it you know, it's checking some serious boxes. We've got gold hardware. We've got active electronics. We have kind of a fancy top. This one happens to be like a neck through or maybe a set neck construction on this one. Um, and, you know, it's just, it screams uh, artisan, right? Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful, yeah. I think it like th there's a debate or I'm not sure if it's a... Uh a debate that many people are having now, but there, there used to be a bit debate back in the day whether a boutique base could be made by CNC or not. Like, are they using oh. CNCs? Yeah. So, and I think they can be. I think that boutique bases can be. And I think that a lot of the the big makers now, like, you know, are using CNCs anyway. So so I think that that's pretty much, um, yeah, that, that, that debate's gone. So for me, it comes down to the amount of people in the shop. How many people, mm. how big's the company? And yep. it's interesting to, to like a, a rabbit hole to go down. I can't, there's not one that's jumping to mind, but I wonder if there is a, a moment in time where a, a manufacturer goes from boutique to not boutique <gasps> based on the amount of people that are actually working in there. So for instance, oh, a great... Yeah. A guitar one would be PRS. There was definitely a moment in time where PRS were boutique based, boutique guitar makers, right? Are they boutique now? I have no idea. I cannot tell. <laughs> right? I'm not sure. It's tough. There's yes. a, yeah, it's definitely not black or, and white. You know, the one that I think of in bass world is Warwick, or, or as you guys would say, Warwick. Yeah, yeah, that's true, actually, yeah, because they make a lot of bass as well, don't they? I don't think oh. that, I don't think they're boutique, actually. I you just, don't? No, I don't know. I do not see that Warwick's is boutique. In the 90s, would you have thought differently? Yes. <laughs> 
Same. Yeah. I, I, because I think you're probably right. It crossed the threshold. Give me a number, Scott, throw it out there. What's the number <laughs> of employees that takes you from boutique <laughs> to just a big old sellout? I have no, I think it can be quite high. I think it can be quite high. I think it can be like, you know, into the forties or whatever, but yeah, there is a, there is like, it's a 50 people. I'm like, nah, I don't know. Sure. Well, and you know, how about this? So I've got a base here made by Spectre and Spectre has this custom shop in Woodstock, New York started out. I mean, Spectre was one of the original boutiques. Like they started out Stuart Spectre, Ned Steinberger, making this cool shape and doing these, you know, these things that were really, really I not love Fender. Spectre, by the way. I love Me too, it. dude. Yeah. Me too. Um, uh, late seventies is when they started and then he sold it to Kramer. Right. And then Kramer was making all these bases. And, and then, I don't know, it started to slide into maybe not boutique, but then he got it back. It was SSD. Yeah. Right. And, but now it's so interesting because he sold the company to Korg. So Korg operates Spectre, but there's a custom shop that makes these incredible. I mean, this is, it's, Probably is, like my are they favorite boutique? modern active. Like whether well, we think they are or not, right? Is it? Yes. It is. I, okay. Because, I think because if is. you'd asked me, I said I would have said no. I would have been like, no, it's mm. Spectre. Be and maybe that's because of what your point, like because of the history. They yeah. drag like everybody drags that shit with them, right? You yes. you know, you create it's brand, isn't it? Yes. Brand is what, like when you say their word, their name, that's what you feel in your stomach. At least for me, it's nothing to right. do with what the logo looks like. It's like, what do I emotionally feel like when I hear their name? That's the yes. brand. And I yes. think that when somebody creates that brand, like whatever brand, that shit lasts for a long time. Totally. Yes. And probably it is about that trajectory of the company and right. And then they're making all of these, you know, more inexpensive instruments, exactly. right? Exactly. So there's so, all yeah. of these specters out there that aren't seven, $8,000 super custom team built, you know, small yes. team instruments. And so when you see those, you think, oh, okay, no, this isn't a boutique, but then there is a division, <laughs> right? The custom shop yeah. that to me is absolutely is and it's building them like you know Stuart and the and the crew were building them back in the 70s and they were one of the original boutiques with that Ken just shows Smith. how careful you need to be as a as a yes. boutique based builder right as a custom manufacturer you need to be so careful I think at least my belief is when mm. you're partnering with somebody else to make your instruments mm, you know oh yeah I'm gonna partner with somebody in like China or wherever, or Indonesia, and they're going to like hammer out, you know, a thousand instruments a year. Great. Well, but, but at what cost? Yes. I think that, th that there are people that have done it. Yeah. I think Sadowska did it well with the Metro line. I think that mm -hmm. Dingwall have done it well, but there are, there are people that haven't done a great job of it. And, and, and I think that has had a knock on effect on their brand. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Because you see maybe more of the inexpensive things, but I will say there are players though, that would really excited to get into one of those bases into that brand, f but not for five thousand, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So it sort of depends on who you are and what you want. Yeah. Um, but I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean about like when you hear a brand, what you immediately associate with. I think that's part about the brand trajectory, but it's also part about how much we know about a yeah, brand. Yeah, that's why PRS think about it, right? They're, they're selling a lot of instruments now. Are they boutique? Yep. Well, our guts tell us yes, right? Because of the brand. Because they fancy. <laughs> yeah, right? Whereas yeah, yeah. yeah, with some of the people, they might not have executed, because you can get cheaper PRSs as well, but they've executed it in a way that it, it's sort of like kind of separate from the main brand. Mm. Whereas if there's not a clear line of delineation between the two things and it merges like it has with some companies where they've been expensive, but then they release, you know, and I know where, you know, it comes from. It comes from, well, if we make it too obvious that these aren't made in the shop here, then not as many people are going to buy them. So we'll, we'll try and make the value, the perceived value of these lower cost instruments, we'll try and make the perceived value higher. But what happens yeah. is it decreases the value of the actual expensive instruments and screws you down the line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a cool, it's, cool it's rabbit hole. It's wild. 
Yeah. <laughs> Should we get into the ups and downs? I'm, yeah, I'm really man. excited to hear your downs. <laughs> <laughs> the ups are kind of obvious. What What do you want to do? Let's do the ups first. Yeah, let's hit them with the ups, man. Yeah. What do you got? Do you want me to go or you want to go? Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take the first one. So my first up is it's kind of like limitless. Oh, yes. you've seen the film Limitless? <laughs> right. No, but <laughs> but uh, well, this but is the I base have, version. It's like I, right. limitless, like the just, ultimate uh, power. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> the woods and the just put it all together, and oh, it's going to craft the incredible recipe. What? Yes, it's that. It's like you have the the chance to go and work with a luthier, yeah, and, and craft this amazing instrument. You have like input. Pickups. Yes. Uh, like, well, depending on what manufacturer you go for, because some, I will say, aren't that. Some are actually like, this is our recipe. You can make tweaks here and there, but right. this is our recipe. So yes. I would say that F base are that, right? Yes. So you have got um, a certain and amount of. What else is that? Yeah. This. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. Wall. So wall you've got a certain yep. amount of, of, of custom ability to it. Same with wall. Um, I would say this same with Ken Smith. Ken Smith is legendary yes. for it. It's like, no, it's his pickups, it's his bridge, it's his right. electronics. Oh, I want EMGs in that. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Not going to happen on a Ken Smith. <laughs> right. You're right exactly. about that. It's not yes. the move, right? Right. But, but you know, there's, so there's limited custom ability. But custom ability? It is today. It's a word today. Custom ability. <laughs> custom yes. ability. But, but some like boutique manufacturers, they're just sort of like, you can do anything. You like it in, on. Inlays, pickups, like everything basically. So, you know, that's cool. That's real fun. So I, I think that that's a, um, that, that's a, a kind of positive and we'll get into that in a minute, but yeah, yep. kind of, kind of positive. What, what about seems you, positive in the beginning? Yeah. It seems positive <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get, we'll get into that later on. Hit me with one of your ups. One I of have your that on my list too. I'm also, so, so that's on my list. I have it as customization. I'm going to also go build quality. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. if, if you're working with one of the greatest boutique manufacturers, the build quality is going to be considered. It's going to be great. Like you're going to pick up an instrument, like you pick up a Smith and you look at it and you go, dang, this is crazy. Like yeah. this is a yeah. lot of effort to put into this. But even like, you know, what I was holding this lull. I remember when I first got this, I was like, God, everywhere you look, every joint, every place that a screw goes in, every, every place you interact with the instrument speaks quality. And that's what, you know, I think that experience is what a boutique, a good boutique experience or manufacturer should offer. Um, yeah. and, and obviously, you know, there's things that get screwed up and there's mistakes, but that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a level of detail that I don't find at a big box store when I'm picking up an instrument that costs 1500 bucks. Um, and I think that's to me, it's a big deal. The build quality component is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I will. Yeah. For me too, it was on my list. Uh, another pro for me kind of linked with build quality, um, is playability. Mm, it, it's play, sorry, playability and setup because yes. there's so many mass manufactured instruments where the shit, the, the setup is a complete piece of shit. Yes. Yes. Like totally. awful. Like, like you uh, go into sort of like a regular, you know, sort of like a, I guess sort of like a mass big, uh, mass instrument music shop, right? And you pick up any of those bases and just the setups on those things are shit. <laughs> They're crap. And I'm like, these are really big bass manufacturers. And sure. oh, they suck. If anybody's wondering why they suck, it's because they make so many of them and they're trying to decrease the amount of time that that instrument send, spends on the bench so they can ultimately make more margin, more profit, right? So yeah. they don't want somebody sat with an instrument setting it up for three or four hours, right? They want right. it on that bench. They want it checked over and then it, then they want it out. And in many cases, there are a lot of um, instruments on the lower scale in terms of price that are set up by people that don't play guitar or bass. Check sure. it out. They've got a measurement chart, chart. They go through all of the measurements and then they sit there and go... 
and see if it buzzes or right, right. Yeah, they do that. And then it doesn't, okay, it's out the door. <laughs> sure. You're buying it. <laughs> you know, that's what you get. So yeah, so playability is huge. I think you're going to get somebody to, to really t take care about the playability of it. Um, now, not to say that you can't do that with a cheaper instrument. You could get it. You could take it to somebody like a you know a workshop and get it set up. Great. Also, there are bases out there. The one that always jumps to mind for me is Sire, which are lower cost, but set up great. So I'm not painting everybody's with the same brush, but I'm just saying that, yeah. Yep. Like when you it, are working with a, a luthier, you've, it's kind of like built in that it's going to come with a great setup. Yeah, that it's you're going to take it out of the case and maybe be able to take it to a gig. I mean, there yeah. might be some things that you need to do to adjust it to your own um, preferences, but it's not going to be atrocious. Like, typically, hopefully, <laughs> right? If hopefully, it is, then yeah. there's something, wow, that's really wrong. That's not been the experience that I've had with most of the boutique builders and bases, you know, that I've checked out. I will say this though, one one quick thing about the playability thing. You do have an opportunity with a, a more inexpensive instrument, mass produced, went through the checklist. Okay, it's fine, out the door. Now, there is value in purchasing that and then taking it to someone wonderful to have it set up. Yeah. So it's not that one of those instruments that you buy at a big box store can't be great it, that and that it can't have a setup like a boutique. In fact, if it goes to somebody great and they really know what they're doing and they fret file it and they the nut right and get everything, you know, truss rod, everything is amazing. Wow. Actually, you can have a very inexpensive instrument play really well. It just doesn't typically come that way then that yes. is up to you right and then finding somebody that can do it bringing it to somebody who knows what they're yeah. doing yeah. that's just an extra step that you yeah. have to go through so the price might be uh lower but there's like a bigger risk involved of like well what's the setup gonna be like you know how are we gonna but it it yeah. can be done i just wanted to say that Oh yeah, like I've played lower in like lower cost instruments, like a lot of them that have played as well as like let's put it out there, boutique instruments, they don't necessarily it's not it's not like they can they all play better than cheaper instruments. They're just set up better. You know? Yes. They they can make you know, they're they're made out of the same stuff, wood and metal and, <laughs> right, and shit right, like that, right? right they're all made right. out of the same stuff, right? So they all ultimately can be made to play great. But as Ian was saying, one of them comes like playing great at, straight out of the box. Other ones sometimes need more. You got to work for it. Yeah. So playability <laughs> was mine. Have you got another one on your list? Um, I have. I have this thing, uh, clarity, because I sort of feel like when I plug into a boutique, and it's probably connected to playability, but I can play it all over the place. It seems like it goes for a different level of clarity, maybe in the note. Um, and I think some well, of that like, is like, yes, like all well, over the neck. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe it's also a function of how the electronic sound, right. And it's the whole package of, it sort of goes for a different target than maybe a P bass does. Yeah. yeah, yeah P yeah. bass is kind of meant to be. I think, I mean, obviously you can get a P bass to play beautifully everywhere, but could get a P, P bass, bass boutique. <laughs> oh, is there such a thing? I think there is. On the, on the, the P bass, mm. uh, the P bass boutiques, Oliva Capolo. So Absolutely. It's like they're, they're fully boutique and, and they're like Jimmy really focusing on making them sound just like a sixties P bass. So I'm, not sure dude i'm not sure whether you can let clarity sneak through that but i get it i get it it's mm. more like yeah okay i see what yeah. you're saying playability I and i get I, you know i understand the thread that you're pulling on though i i had it written playability is the word to use i wrote down as agility because i sort of feel like you're you know when i get on something that's boutique i feel like i want to do more play Lunch. more notes Lunge. <laughs> Do some yeah. stretches. Deep lunges. <laughs> yeah. Just want to rip into the splits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I want to play more chords. I want to, you know, and I mean, God, we're getting we're getting precariously close to cons too, right? Because I mean, this could be, you know, just because you could lunge, do do the deep lunge on yeah, your maybe base. This is, maybe this is like a con. Yeah. Every time I play a booting bass, I want to do a deep lunge. <laughs> 
What is the like deep lunge equivalent on the bass? Is it some tapping figure, you know, some crazy, what's the deep, <laughs> you know, like, just like, look at me, look yes, at me it, go. Dude, it's this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's clarity of B string as you detune it. Yeah, it's yeah. Dingwall. <laughs> oh, it's great. I mean, dude, I got some cons. I bet you do too. I've got some are there cons. any more? Are there any more pros for you? Oh, I, I got one more. I got one. It, it, maybe you do too. Yeah, my, like mine is that you get to if you're buying a a, a brand new um, boutique base, you get to work with somebody at the top of their craft. You know, somebody that really loves and cares about, you know, that whole thing. So I think that that's um, a great experience as well to have. Yes, yes. And I have here support a small business and serious craft. Exactly right. That experience, like, honestly, man, when I went through the Spectre Custom Shop and like going to the farmer's market. (laughs) And I don't know that they offer at Spectre, at the Spectre USA Custom Shop, I don't know that they offer this to like just anybody, but I got to go through there and like, like, do like, you know, and I mean, I, look, I, I don't know. Did, did that <laughs> did that make this the, the most amazing five string? Yeah, Maybe yeah, it did, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. it's it's incredible. That experience is really cool. I got to like pick out the the wood for the fingerboard, and Will, you know, the shop manager was like, write your name on it, and gave me like a silver pencil, and I was like, oh god, really? Very He's like, well, cool. you know, I mean, it, it, yeah, we yeah. sand it, you know, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like man, that process was incredible. I got to pick out this crazy like this top is like a combo of flamed and spalt yeah. like it's un- is that all the way freaking- through the body no so then so it's half it's a sandwich oh. and then on the back it's classic flame Got like it. the and the what old. are the pick what are the pickups so these are emgs oh. emgs in but in vintage locations which was this was a prototype of that so i helped them uh, i i helped them with a few ideas uh and with a project that they did where they revised their shape I didn't help with the shape, but you I help. did give. You were me- like, "Look, lads." <laughs> well, I mean, Look, in a way, you got to get like, this shit together. Go. On. <laughs> I was like, "Let's." I feel like we ought to, you know, you guys ought to offer a different um, pickup yeah. spacing, and you know, and they thought, mm, I don't know, and then they went with it, and they really liked it. I mean, this space, it's it's insane. Whenever I play it, it's crazy, man. So. Yeah, that experience too connected me to this instrument more, you know, like seeing all the raw materials laid out on a table. And then yeah. I went and they opened the case and we did this like video reveal. Are you kidding me? Did like, it smell good? <sighs> yes. And it's just, God, the back, like this is, check this out. This is crazy. This is like level of boutique detail. Gloss, 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 transition, yeah. matte. Do you see that? like it's crazy so the body is all glossy like thick gloss and then it transitions to a matte finish on the neck so it feels better when you play it oh it's incredible and that's all somebody sanding it's people you know did you ask Um, for the matte neck yeah oh wild yeah, so all those little things, crazy. Just little things that matter to me. Like I like the subtle shape of the shallower tuners a little better than hip shot. So they did these cool custom, they're kind of thick, chunky, like the old, you know, like old timey yeah. ones, um, you know, and they sign the back of the neck of the headstock, you know, and they do like a, this this truss rod cover is made out of the same wood as the fingerboard. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, you know, like and, and F-Base cool does stuff. that kind of stuff too. Yeah. But that's that experience was a big, big deal. A yeah. big deal to me, you know? It was like, I can remember I've when always you, wanted when you to did do it that. You were like super stoked about it. You were just like, oh my oh, God. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, so yes. And I, I've got one more that actually bridges the gap, dude. Oh, go for In, it. Go for into it. the cons. Are you ready? Are you ready to get into the shit, Scott Devine? Yeah. yeah. What sucks about these? <laughs> this is a pro and also a con. It says something. The boutique base that you choose to play says something about who you are and how you play. Mm. Yeah. And that is a double-edged sword, right? Yeah. I, I don't know what, like, can I just tell you what, in my mind, what I thought as you said that? I thought Please. about, 
you turning up to a studio. You, like there's a, a bunch of musicians all all working in the studio. They're all waiting for the bass player to turn up, right? Everybody's yep. getting their gear out and stuff. Yep. And, 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 and you open your case and it's just this sort of like super booty. It's like seven <laughs> strings. It's like the, you know, the, the top's insanely flamed. It's just, yeah. Yes. Like, I'm like, hey guys, are you ready for the blues session today? And this exactly. comes out of the case. And then you know? everybody's like side eye and just been like, oh my God, like what yes. is going on? Yeah, so it's it, it it can say something, can it? Something. Negative. Yeah, <laughs> and what you know, typically, and and okay, there's this is all about your own comfort level, your own right, like your your uh, insecurities, right? Because maybe maybe it's like ah, who cares? Play what you want to play, you know. Don't let anybody. But man, I will say, picking the right thing for the gig, I think has actually been very important to me. So there was a time that I played a Carvin six string all the time. And I remember showing up to something and just kind of like, I didn't fit. And it, and when you show up with a big number of strings for something that doesn't require that, I think people automatic, you're, you're just fighting a little bit uphill right from the start. It's an unfortunate truth. So just yes. before, because I imagine everybody's like, hang on, I'm going to leave a comment. This is not the way things should be. Well, it do it. Leave that comment. <laughs> hey, we're not saying yeah. it is the way things should be. It's an unfortunate truth. It's like, Same. yeah, it's, it's like if you turn up to the studio session and you're wearing tight spandex, right? <laughs> you might feel really comfortable and you might be into that shit. <laughs> But it says something about you. And I know it's funny, but it is actually the same kind of thing. It's, totally. It's, it says something about you. And, you know, and I've, I have not worn spandex, but it looks incredibly comfy. <laughs> Freedom. Oh, and I mean, you could, yeah. you could deep lunge in the spandex. Oh, yeah. Way better, dude. <laughs> hey, how not to get a gig. Turn up with your seven string in spandex. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and look, there are situations though, where I've had the opposite, man. I did a thing that was, that leaned more like gospel and R and B. And I turned up with an old school P bass thing with flats. Cause I wanted to kind of go that R and B, but it wasn't the right call. So I showed up with my 51 custom shop fender. Cause we're doing some Jackson five, but we're also doing some more like modern stuff like Shaka Khan. And I thought, oh, but this is going to be cool. Cause this is old school and that's in its suite but it was in a in a scene that honestly having like an active five or six was the move was the move so it, it goes the other way too you just have yeah. to be aware and when i showed up and i saw the guitar that the guitar player was playing i was like damn it i think it was you know it was prs or it was something and it had a fancy top you knew and i was like shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah they you know? wanted the and, it, and it's a, it's a very specific sound they wanted the like the ken smith or the mtd or the yeah the tobacco, like that kind of better. sound yeah yeah and i just made the wrong call and I wish that I could have gone home. I was like, there wasn't enough. I'm like, God, I should go get another base. And there wasn't time, you know? And so I, I'm i not just saying, it's it's kind of like a, a one, you know, it's really narrow to say like, oh, you know, it, it's the extended range boutique base player that's always going to be the heel or the butt of the joke. That's not true. Yeah. You show up to with in, in gospel church, with a P bass with flats, yeah, it might not be the move, right? Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or something that's really vintagey, a Gibson, you know, like imagine, you know, showing up with like a short scale Gibson EB2, yeah, uh, you know, in, yeah. in like a modern gospel church environment. No, 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 not the vibe. So, so it's it not just, yeah, it's not just like the vintage snob or like, oh, it's got to be a Fender or vintage style thing or nothing. No, I mean, in certain contexts, it's the it's the opposite. And it makes me want to buy an MTD, you know, like I hear, I hear Goucher, you know, and I hear yeah. just, the, you know, and of course, Hubert Eves. And I go, oh man, that I'm just not in that world um, just as in, much. Just in Reigns. Just well. Reigns, like, man. Killer. Yeah. Yes. I will, yeah. So, and so another to 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 jump into another i guess like a con the dark side right yes laughing about for the dark side it would be the expense of it as well like just price yeah i'm just gonna say it out loud the the distance between 
something that's going to cost six hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars, and something that's going to cost six thousand dollars or sixteen thousand yeah. dollars. The distance in price isn't the sound. <laughs> it's yes, thank not you. Yes, be that's audible. very true. Yeah, you're just not going to be able to hear it. Absolutely right. Um, but it will it will get you that level of customization, build quality, bespoke, handheld experience that we talked It'll about. Get all of price. that. It's going to come and it's going to play great, but yep. it's not going to make you sound any better. Damn right. Damn right. Like it's it's just not. It's not going to make you sound any better. <gasps> I forgot yes. a, a pro. Actually, they oh. can be really inspiring to play these types of instruments. Mm, I'll yeah. put that out there as a pro, which Absolutely. means ultimately you're going to pick it up more, you're going to play it more, and you're going to become mm. a better player because of, off the back of that. Mm. I found that when I can remember when I got my like a PRS when I was like. 15 and oh, damn yeah. i played that thing every single day my dad did not have to say hey do you practice because i was like rocking you out on that because i loved it because yeah. i was inspired by it so yes that is, that is a pro but hey but i didn't sound any better than on my 200 dollars squire that i was playing beforehand i just didn't so right. it's really easy to look at the catalogs <laughs> catalogs hey dude 45, that's what we did dude, 45 baby <laughs> it's really easy to look at the websites and watch the youtube videos the flashy players right. that unfortunately is not going to be you know it's, it doesn't come you don't pay the price and then suddenly you play better it just doesn't so it's really really important that you understand that going in because otherwise you're going to pick up that bass and you're going to play exactly the same as you played the cheaper bass so it doesn't really yeah just it, it is i guess sort of like a it can be a con that people think going into it that you know, they're going to spend more that it's going to play better or they're going right. to play better, I should say. Or they're going to be better because of it or sound better. And exactly. in some ways, because of the of the agility, the clarity, you know, like the sound of these things, they can actually accentuate your bad playing. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, there's absolutely. all this yeah. there's all this treble, they're bright, maybe, and you know, you you're squeaky and you know, your fretting is sloppy, maybe. And some, some of that of stuff gets actually really unforgiving, yeah. Like, yes. like a Ken Smith. Like Ken Smith's like oh. I love the Ken Smith sound. I think in the mix as well, they just kill. Yeah. But if you're just starting out and you play a Ken Smith, it's it's going to be really, really, really unforgiving. You're going to hear all of the little pop squeaks and farts that you don't want people to hear. Like, dude, there is nothing. There is nothing worse than this. <laughs> On a Ken Smith, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, try to play a D. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but if you're fretting properly, woo! Oh my word! Right, but if you remember you don't, when we were watching um, <laughs> Winston Blissett play with uh, Massive Attack, oh, it's a couple killing, of weeks man. back playing. Yes, there's, yes, a, there's yes. a clip of. Um, oh, <laughs> I know, I know, man, I know. Yeah, so you've oh. got to have your shit together, right? You have to have your shit together. Yeah. Um, yeah. In in order, I think, to sound good on one of these instruments. And you don't have to be a burning fast chops machine, but I think, um, and maybe one of these instruments would encourage you to, to get it together, right? It's not like, oh, you have to, and then, I'm, I'm not gatekeeping. I'm just saying, don't think one of these will make you sound better if your technique isn't together. It might make you sound worse because they are yeah. mirrors. Like yeah, especially depending on what it is, is, but like stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, like the Smith. Yeah, God damn, just I want to <laughs> just just say that I love Smiths, man. Like they just sound so unique. They sound they're just, they're cool. It's a yeah. strong flavor. It's they're a really strong cool. flavor for sure. Hey, I'll give you another con. Let's go. Um, that the bass that you want, like you really want it. You yeah, really want it, right? Yeah, the bass you want. Um isn't the bass that you really want because the, your visuals, what you want it to look like, mm -hmm. just get in the way of the sound. You, you yeah. get so hoodwinked by the fancy top. Oh, yeah, dude. And the, you know, like, and all oh. of that stuff, you just get hoodwinked by it. Yes, right? and yes. You, and even though you say these words to yourself, you're like, hey, whatever it looks like, fancy tops it's not going to make a difference to the sound 
Mm -hmm. but you don't believe it. Somewhere <laughs> deep, deep in the darkest depths, yes. you are telling yes. yourself this bullshit yes. that you're like, actually, it's going to be better. Oh, yeah. And it will make me play better. Like all of that stuff, right? So ultimately, that um, the bass that you, you know, you think that you want actually isn't the bass that you really want, right? So, right. Um, and this can come in multiple different ways. The way that I like to think about it is that um, people get, I get, they just get overexcited by options and they just add in all of the options to the base. And ultimately yes. there is a real strong argument that that isn't the move to make. And it does have a impact on the sound, right? So it could be, th this could go in two directions. You might be into James Jameson and, you know, Duck Dunn and, and like, you might be into all of those guys, but you get just sort of like, you know, <laughs> You smell that booty. <laughs> what is, what is, what is that over there? Yes. And, and, for, and, and yeah, and I've been that guy. And you end up buying something that's just completely not in aligned with like how you want to play or how you want to sound. Right. right. So yes. that's one thing that happens. But the other thing is that you just get hoodwinked by all of the fancy pants stuff. And that doesn't have any effect on the sound. And in some cases, there will be people or are people that strongly... Um, What's the way of putting this? That strongly believe that the more fancy stuff, the, the uh, fancy amounts of wood, the more joins in a bass actually has the opposite effect on the sound. It actually decreases the the fundamental kind of like juiciness of the tone. The right? connection, the resonance, the something. Exactly, yeah. We yes. were talking with Kerry Nordstrand, who has built all of these bases. So a lot of people will not, will know of and have heard of Nordstrand pickups, right? They're in many, many, in Ibanez and all of the bases now use Nordstrand pickups. Tons of bases, pickups. yeah. Tons of bases, right? And he, but he, back in the day, he used to make real slinky boutique bases. Yes. Multi-laminate, like the full thing. He also makes a lot of Fender looking instruments. Um, P bases, J bases. And he was like, look, I've done a lot of experiments over the like two or three decades that I've been making instruments. And in his experience, it's the ones with the least joins sound the best in his experience. So one piece bodies or two mm. piece bodies, not like three piece bodies with laminate tops and multi layers and, and all of that. And look, right. I know that it's, murky i know it's not black and white i know like i've just said hey i love the ken smith sound ken smith is about multi-laminate instruments but all that to say that one of the cons is it's really easy to end up with an instrument that really doesn't match what you need or or really want you like the visuals just get in the way of, of, oh, of, yeah. of the tone searching that you do because we hear with our eyes and, yeah. and not enough people admit it, but we are often drawn to instruments by the way they look first. Yeah. You see a performance and you go, what is that? Whether it's an amp, right. Or an instrument, yeah. or you see it in a, in a catalog, no more catalogs. You see it online, you see it on Instagram. <laughs> and if it looks great to you, then your brain is going to say, and I think it sounds good too, right? And your brain is like, yes, yes, it sounds good because look how freaking good it looks. Yeah. I mean, and I'm I'm just calling myself out on that too. That I am so susceptible to that. Even still, I'm like, oh yeah, the purple one's gonna sound better for sure. <laughs> or like, oh the oh the one with the crate, oh the wenge, you know, I'm like grabbing this wall. Oh man, you know, the wenge facings, the top and the back. Ooh, it's gonna add the warmth, the mahogany core. I mean, I I fall prey to it. I like it, even if it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like I kind of get it. I just get a kick out of the mystery yeah. of it all yeah. because it's not. Here's the thing, dude. It's not 100% bullshit. Wood True. definitely like, yeah. like wood does. I think wood does make a difference. I've played like specters oh, yeah, back to back sure. that were identical yeah. other than fingerboard or other than their top wood and they're different and it could be that hey no two instruments are the same but i do think that wood makes a difference i'll plant that flag there are people that are like no you put pickups in a log and they definitely make a difference to the playing experience yeah. maybe if i were blindfolded hearing audio files i'd have a harder time hearing it Please don't, God, don't make me do that. I'll just get it wrong. And everyone's like, you're an idiot. Um, and I might be, 
but the playing experience would matters and the visual experience. But I agree, dude. It's a long winded way of saying, I agree. We hear with our eyes. Uh, you might get burned by that. Yeah, you, it's it's super easy to be burned by. I have in the past, you have. Here's another yes. one as well that kind of like goes along with it. It's a little different, is your hit rate of going through the process of having this base built, right? You go, you choose all of the options. Mm. You, you, you're on the internet. You're like looking at, is it Nordstrom pickups? Is it Bartolini? Pick oh no, wait a minute. Oh, oh yeah, it's right, EMG. right. It's EMG. It's EMG. <laughs> It's EMGs? No, 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 no. It's an odd strap. Right. That, like going oh, through I what know. tuners pick up, oh, you know, fingerboard wood, body. Your hit rate of going through that process is going to be not as you want it to be. It might mm. be 50% or lower. And what I mean by hit rate is going through the experience, ordering the base, you get the base, and you've yep. done all of your due diligence, you've done all of the research. This yes. base, right? should be your dream this base oh, is like absolutely you can basically die tomorrow a happy a happy guy or a happy guy yes right? but it's not the reality and that is why there's a shit ton of boutique bases for sale on reverb because people <laughs> went through that experience and they right. got the base and they decided oh, this wasn't the base that i wanted so the hit rate is like let's say 50% or lower. Hit rate, yeah. yeah. And I have that too here. I have it as option anxiety in build and electronics, right? There's so many damn options. It's like trying to, bra it's trying to choose something to watch. It's like, oh, there's so many great things to check out. What do I do? And that can be, that can be difficult. That's why sometimes it's just nice to have a manufacturer that's like, here's what we do. We do Dude, this and this is, you know. You're taking it words right out of my mouth. That is why that I think yeah. that though a lot of the builders, let's say, um, who do we mention earlier? F Base, Ken Smith, Wall. I'm sure there's people that don't do this, but these, they're my favorite type of boutique builders because yes. they don't give you all the options. Right. They're like, oh, this is what we do. And you can make a few tweaks and that's it. Because that means as a uh, as a customer, as a buyer, I can play one of their bases, the, the one that I'm not, you know, the one that I'm not buying, obviously, right? I'll play one and I'll get a sense of what the vibe is and I will know, huh, well, it's probably going to be within sort of like, you know, 15 or 20% of this instrument I've just played right here. So I get right. a sense of what it feels like, what it plays like, what it sounds like. I then order the bass and ideally in an ideal world and a lot of the time, especially with like instruments like F bass, Ken Smith, who do I mention? Wall, there will be others as well. Um, you're going to get something that's pretty close to what you've thought in your head. Yep. The flip side is when you just get all of the options and you can do whatever, it's, it, it can be so, it's just a deep rabbit hole. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. If it's a full custom shop and you can do anything, ugh, it's dangerous. It's it dangerous. Be, yeah. It it danger. So dangerous. Yeah. Danger, danger. And look, if yeah. somebody really is like bought into the idea of doing that, um, and going down that experience with the manufacturer, what I would say is try and like look at the look at the instruments they've been making in the past because success leaves clues. They've probably yep. been doing a lot of the same like you know kind of uh, like mix of instrument mix of woods and stuff like that. Take Federa, right? A lot of their instruments are older with Seymour Duncan pickups with their 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 um, uh, circuitry and stuff like that, right? Yeah, In right. fact, I know somebody that went to Federa, b did the whole thing, got the boutique base, and he said, I should have gone with one of their classic kind of, yeah. You know, the formulas, yeah. He should have gone with their classic formula because they know that formula. They right. believe in it. They've perfected it over time. But they do have to, you know, cater to people like, you know, us that turn up and they're like, ah! <laughs> I want, I've got this piece of wood and it came out of a swamp 400 years ago, black Karina. And I want it, you know, like they, you know, they do cater to that as well. So, um, oh, it's great. Yeah. It's, it's a gr it's great. I, like, I, I do. I love it. I mean, look, I've got all the booty basically. I've got this here. I, know. I did mention as well. I wanted to, I'm giving, let me just turn this volume down. I mentioned the giveaway earlier. We are giving away a bunch of bases. Oh, bust them out, dude. Come on, bust yeah, if, them out. Check this what out. do we got? And maybe we, like, is there any cons that I haven't mentioned? Yeah, 
There's there one are, for oh, me. Go for it. And then we'll talk about this. Oh my okay. god. Okay. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> I, I know. It's just like good enough to eat. <laughs> Lick it to make sure it's yours. You know, yeah, claim yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're giving oh. it away. Um, so uh, the thing for me, oh. oh, it sounds great. Killing bass, man. Anyway, That's dude, the Olinto yeah. Jazz 5. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, the one thing I'll say Look is depending on. <laughs> See, oh. you can't, like, I can't even tell the story, dude. Look because you're like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my I'm trying to be God. diligent and move on with the podcast. What is it? <laughs> oh, so good. Anyway, move on, move on. Take it. No, no, no. I'm going to let you talk about that bass, dude. Tell us about that Alinto bass. Okay, Come well, on. Okay. Tell us bass, about I'm it. I'm giving the bass away again with the Fide with the F bass and all of the other basses I've been talking about. Um, it's a five sync. This is an Alin Alinto, Alinto, a badass yeah. at making fso's fender shaped <gasps> object what does dude. that mean fender shaped object yeah right. it's like here's lows, another right like the sadowskis like like that class of boutique instrument yes the Alinto is one of those um and yeah it's just beautiful and it's just like the finish is incredible the back of the neck is just insanity. unreal it's insanity and then it's got these beautiful like v here like oh and it, and it's word. not in the shape of the neck but it's just in the finish is that called a it's stinger just, i don't know what it's called mm. but it's but it's gorgeous anyway if you want to check out all of the other prizes we mentioned them earlier but just go to winabasebuilderschool.com and you can enter for free over there but yeah i'm going to pull out a couple more boutique bases in a minute as well just to show you but dude hit me with some more cons I mean, okay, I will say that when I was in boutique uh, bass world in my 20s, I was playing in a rock band. So, and we got an opportunity to go play and make a record with a with a famous producer named David Bendith. And I'll never forget him saying to me, bring a Fender. Do you have a Fender Jazz or a Fender P bass? Either one, just yeah. bring a passive, just, it doesn't even need to be expensive, just one of those. And I said, oh, uh, I have something better than that. And he was like, okay, but you know, what is it? And I was like, well, I have your six string carving. modulus. Like I had like oh, a, a modulus. six string modulus yeah. and I had Zons. I was really into like graphite necked boutique bases oh, and they're, and they're producer, awesome, but you're a producer's nightmare. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, don't worry, don't worry producer guy like i was like oh god this guy you know like this idiot and when you know of course i was the idiot so we roll down i've spent all this money and time and energy on these big boutique bassy things right i mean the modulus was coca bolo i mean it was similar looking to this <laughs> to this smith you know i show up and and he, it was nice he let me play my basses but at the end of the thing we were kind of talking and he was like oh you know what do you want to do and do you want to be in this band forever and i was like i kind of want to play sessions and and he was really cool. He said, you know, um, you if you just want to do your own thing, play whatever bass you want. Who cares? And make it your thing, and that's awesome. But if you want to play for other people, you have to get hip to some other sounds. And yeah. he's like, go get that jazz bass off the wall. They And the studio we were working at had like a, it was a sage green. I'll never forget it because it is burned into my mind. Mexican made sage green jazz bass that could be purchased around that time for $579. Yeah. And I got that thing. He's like, plug it in. We plugged it into the Neve console and he played my bass track that I'd recorded on my multi-thousand dollar, you know, modulus. And he's like, okay, and now let's just do a pass of you playing that, that. And I played the jazz bass. I played one note, like the, oh. and it went, and it like, it did a thing that was, and it sat in a way. And I was like, oh, and he was like, see, and with that, like, I'm going to add EQ and gain in this way. It's not going to poke out too much. It's going to sit, but it's going to sound fat and gritty. He's like, put that in the track. And I played this bass and he was like, he was like, hey, world baby, changed. Don't. It's Dude, crazy I was like, to go through uh, that experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my con is what I associate sometimes with, with the real bright stuff. So not necessarily the FSOs, the fender shaped objects, but active boutique um, woods, maybe graphite in the neck or whatever, right? Those sometimes to me can sound beautiful on their own. Like they're on perfect base island. Like here it is, you know? 
oh my God, everything is beautiful on Base Island alone. <laughs> in, right? Yeah. You're, you're in your room. It's Base Island. You're, you're not even thinking about the rest of the world. You're not thinking about anything else. You're just <laughs> idyllic. The breeze, dude, it's it's 75 degrees. I don't know what that is in Celsius, but you know, it, it's like <laughs> idyllic. It's lovely. There's a mojito, dude. You just, oh. And then, but it does not translate you become weird base guy on base island do you know what i mean like on base island you become this insane base nerd where like that's the only thing you want to play and you don't play well with others and now you're like the awkward kid that has to try to join the right so (laughs) sometimes man i'm just bad at analogies but i i think that experience of an active sounding bass struggles. It doesn't play as well with others in certain genres, especially where I was in like rock world, a bright, clanky, active modulus was not fitting the vibe as well as a $500 Fender. And that was a hard fucking pill to swallow, dude. So it, yeah, it kind of goes both ways, isn't it? Like what you were saying earlier is you need to be really well aware of the sort of like the um the the i guess the sort of like the the room that you're walking into right yes. who's in the room like play into that so making sure because you can get a boutique instrument that is like a, an a lever capolo but like something like that or maybe a michael Earl, but maybe one of the, like the vintage ones or sure. a linto so there are these instruments that do fit in to you know like you're going to turn up and the producer's not going to know anything. He's going to be like, oh, cool. He's got an FSO. Great. Fender shape. Yeah, okay. right. He knows exactly what to do. She knows exactly what to do. Yes. Right. Um, but if you do rock up with that, you know, fancy topped instrument, whatever. And again, we're not saying this is right or wrong. What will happen is you will create anxiety for the producer. They don't know what to expect. They're going to have to go at this thing from the ground up. They have got their playbook. When you turn up with a jazz bass or a P bass or something like that, right? You know, it can be a boutique instrument, but but like an FSO version, right? They know exactly yeah. what to do. They just use their playbook. Oh, I do this, I do that, I do that. Right. It's going to sound great in the mix. But when you turn up with something that's not that, you are going to cause anxiety and they are not going to, they're going to be like, oh, oh, oh like what yes. do I need to do? It's like a complete ground up experience for them. So it's just going to be, yeah, it's not going to be as easy. Right. And also just worth this, I think it was, um, Ken Smith that was telling the story or maybe somebody that was using a Ken Smith. This did happen with Ken Smith bases in New York on the session scene that all of the producers really wanted that Ken Smith sound. Wow. Right. Uh, Yeah. Like back in the, I think it was like late eighties, maybe early nineties. They wanted the Ken Smith sound. So clarity. Yeah. Yeah. If you were turned up with a P bass, maybe they were stressed out at that time. They were like, yes, I want the Ken Smith. sound. I know exactly what to do with it. And I can just use my, this playbook and it's going to sound great. So I think that it does exist. And right now, obviously like modern gospel, it's probably going to be, more of a sort of like modern active sound that those yep. producers want, but being very aware and not to our earlier point, not just like letting your eyes make all of the decisions, right? Oh, <laughs> yes. the fan series, the better it is. Really consider what environment you're going to be playing in this. Like what music are you going to be playing? Who are you going to be playing it with? Like all of those things yeah. can really come into play here. And maybe there's a different conversation to be had. Is like, well, how do I get like, if I really want the single cut boutique bass, what do I need to do? Is there an option that I could, you know, a, a thing that I could do to make it work in that situation where you're playing amongst people that maybe want like a Fender or something like that? Like, is there something that you could do? Anyway, conversation for another time. Mm, but yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I the, the thing that I just wanted to say is I was really... Um, either or camp for a long time. In the beginning, you know, I was like, oh, a boutique. And then I had that experience of like, oh no, now it needs to be vintage. And I was playing in scenes and crews where the vintage thing was really um, admired. And the boutique thing was totally clowned. You'd show up, if you, if I showed up in some of the stuff that I was doing with a MTD or something, you would, you just get laughed at. And Part of it is you have to have the confidence to do what you, whatever you want to do, A, and accept the ramification. You want to show up with with the wrong instrument, or the, or right? The instrument that maybe is you, but doesn't fit the thing. You have to be okay with the ramifications of that. Yeah. Or this is my actual recommendation. 
enjoy both sides and really know, as Scott said, how to read the room, yeah. right? Send, Scott. send your spouse this bit of the video. <laughs> I need more bases. Enjoy. Like, enjoy Ian and sides. Scott said. They said, <laughs> right? This is an investment. It's actually, I'm not buying anything. I'm just transferring money from this, like in the bank, like that object, over to yes. this object. Yes. And I can sell it. It's actually not costing me anything. Just moving money. Of course. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's very close to liquid asset. <laughs> I, I do think though, I have arrived at a place where it's just lanes. It's just about lanes and camps. And you decide, you get to decide what you want to bring for the for whatever you're doing. And so if you find yourself playing in that blues gig and you want to do the duck done pee bass thing, do it. But then also, if there's a church environment that you play in, have the modern active five. You do not have to choose... Just let the situation, let the music choose. That's what I want to say is just let the music choose. You did that fusion record, Scott. You did that on an active five-string boutique F bass. The banana bass. R.I.P., dude. Yeah, dude. R.I.P. <laughs> the banana bass. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right? But then sometimes you reach for a P bass when you go out and you play at the pub, right? Yeah, because yeah. that thing is going to provide with flats and that is going to provide a different experience. So look, I do that too in my session world. There's sometimes where I'm playing the specter right? It, in a situation that requires that kind of sound. And then there's other times where I'm playing more of an FSO, fender shaped object, either a fender or the lull, something short scale, right? That's real vintagey and plunky, like the yeah. Warren Saku behind me. And that stuff is just about, to me, it's about what the music needs. And it's also about what the aesthetic needs of the gig. Like if I'm taking something on tour or if I'm doing a gig, I think about how this is going to look on stage, how it's going to, um, is it going to fit into this vibe, and, but still be me. I don't think you have to just be like one or the other. You can have both. Yeah, buy all absolutely. the bases. Buy and, all the bases. And, That's and what I'm saying. Yeah, buy all the bases. And just to put it out there as well, if anybody's listening to this and they're just like, no, no, fuck you. I, <laughs> I, I just want one instrument and I want it to be the way I want it to be. And Damn I'm going right. to turn up to all of it. I'm like, more power to you. Absolutely. Like, because I like renegades. And I think yeah, there's I always room for somebody to be like, I don't care what we've been talking. We've been talking sort of like logically, right? Logically through the sort of like, yes. you know, this conversation. But ultimately, if you just want to do whatever the fuck you want to do, just <laughs> do it. And ultimately, when it comes down to it, your playing is going to be the thing. Like, of course. Your playing's going to be the thing. So yep. just, you know, that's, I guess, sort of like a, what I want to leave this with, right? It's, <sighs> you, it's, it's really to do with your playing. It's absolutely and, right. And enjoy all of these instruments because yeah. it's just such a freaking fun place to be. Now, and, dude, before, oh, dude, before the Jazz Bass Special, oh, my word, that thing is awesome. <laughs> We're giving that away as well. Winnerbaseholderschool.com, free to enter. You know where to go. But, dude. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's so good. Mm. <laughs> Duff McKagan video coming. Keep a watch out. Um, oh, my God, yep. Dude, give me. Yeah. Give me your favorite five. Boutique builders. Favorite five, and then we're going to call it. Favorite five. Th but th Favorite five. <laughs> it's too, that's too hard. I have this huge list. Uh, I, I, I'm giving. five. Even the new ones and the, and the old classics. Do you want to do five of each? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is how weak I am. Do you see that? Do you see that? My wife I mean, takes advantage of that all the time. I weak. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Favorite five. Okay. Favorite, well, favorite five. New ones on the scene. Um, to me, my, my favorite so far that I think I've ever played is Lull. Is the Lull. So FSO, it is. FSO. FSO-shaped object. I play it all the time. Um, Lull is a big deal. Spectre reminds me of my youth. So Spectre is a, a very close second. I just don't have as many opportunities to, for this sound, but whenever I play it, I'm like, God, it makes me want to play music where this would fit it perfectly. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so Spectre, pff, yeah, man. I mean, I also have to say, just because I have a uh, interface with it, is Ken Smith, because it's so thumbprint. Yes. Yeah. You know, so the two Ken Smiths I have are the 85, and then this is a more modern 85 four string, and then the 21 six string. And I don't play them very often, but whenever I pick it up, I'm like, oh my God, I love it. Um, I, I, I really want to say, even though this doesn't fit the, the aesthetic of like, of, of thinking about, um, boutiques, this bass is my favorite short scale. It's, uh, the Vorin Saku yeah. IMA. And, um, I, I reach for it all the time. I love it. It's beautiful. Uh, and this is a really customizable thing too. Um, was that, I don't know. And then uh, I'll pick a classic. I'll pick a classic. I'm going to also shout out uh, MTD because it's never, it's not something that I have ever really, I've never owned one. I owned an old Tobias, but I've never owned an MTD, but I like Mike. Um, whenever I've been to their booth at NAMM, it's so cool. The vibe is great. Yeah. And I hear players with them and I'm like, oh, that's such a sound. It's a very distinct sound. Yeah. Um, and there's more. I mean, God, dude. But Give I, me I'm, one odd one, like one that you just want to mention where you're just like, these guys are doing something special. A new builder that's doing something really special is Strati. And we mentioned them on... Um, the Nam video. Yes. yes. Uh, they are doing something absolutely incredible. Two people, husband and wife team. They're, they are amazing, beautiful. I've played some of their fretless instruments and I'm sneaking it in because I, because you can't stop me. RKM <laughs> dude, RKM, oh, RKM that, yeah. who built that bass for Sharon. And I played one of their dual P's. <sighs> That was a really the dual P thing was a it was a really interesting experience. It was yeah. different, right? Yeah. So I guess I guess for me, it like I come down to what's the thumbprint? Like I want to hear your voice through this instrument. I want to hear a, a unique character mm, coming out yeah, of these instruments. Yeah, yeah. So that's why maybe I didn't choose. Maybe there's some on this list that I'm looking at that I'm like ah I I couldn't choose it because. I couldn't hear the character of the instrument in the same kind of way. Those are the ones that resonate with me the most, but God, I'm pissed that I didn't say Dingwall because what a character. Dude, oh! oh! And I'm pissed, oh! And I'm pissed gonna... that I, you know, like... Okay. I hate that you made me choose. Your your turn, sorry. I'm hogging mine. the mic. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know how many... How many did I give you? Five. Five. Asshole. Well... What a, what, <laughs> well, you know, I've actually broken mine up into different categories. So oh, I'm gonna God give damn you, it. I'm going to give you five of each category. Oh, you asshole. <laughs> okay. Cheers, divine. Cheers, divine. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. So we've got. <laughs> oh, God. You're the worst. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm just sorting out my little, I got my, my shit down here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So here's the sort of like the classics. My favorite classic boutique bases in no order would be yep. Federa. I think that they are undoubtedly kind of like the king of the boutiques. They've just done a great job of um, building an amazing brand and their um their build quality is outrageous and all you of these were gonna people, say it the, the build quality of all of these people are outrageous but federa is outrageous so federa number two f base of course this isn't an f base <laughs> That one, baby. That, that was one incredible. <laughs> Alan, don't you dare edit that out. That was my favorite thing that happened all day. <laughs> F face. Yes. Um, I love the BN. The BN series is my favorite. Um, I've owned a bunch of BN fives. <clears throat> they are. I've said it before. I'll say it again. In terms of like my experience of playing a boutique instrument, they are the, the most consistent for sound. They all, yep. I know exactly what I'm getting when I buy yes, F-Bass. right. Just love them. So F-Bass. 
Uh, and and they just to be very clear, um, Federa, they will build you whatever you want. It's about building your dream base. F base right. are not that. They are sort of like, this is our recipe. This is, you know, you can customize around the outside, but it's, they use a recipe. So Federa number one, and these are in no order. Just like, you know, I'll just go with it. Federa number one, F base. Um, number three, Ken Smith. I absolutely love Ken Smith. Yeah. Maybe Ken Smith might be my Desert Island base if I had to take one. Wow. Just, they just sound so good. I love them. Ken Smith. And I love that Ken is like the sort of like, the base world's grumpy granddad. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, he there's is. so many people bitching about Ken on talk base. Oh my God. Like Ken is fucking rock and roll, dude. Uh, I know. Like, yes. The stories you're right. about Ken Smith are like outrageous. <laughs> people call him. Well, I'm not, I'm sure this doesn't happen now, but like back in the day, right. Yeah. When Ken Smith's was sort of like, they ruled the world, the base world. Anyway, people call Ken Smith and like, he's like, are you a pro player? And they're like, uh, no, and he's like, Ksh. I'm like, people need to exist in the world. Like, like he's rock and roll. Ken Smith, I freaking love you. Anyway, so, but if that yeah. would have happened to you as a kid, you would have been oh, like mortified. Th obviously, yes, dude. Yeah. I had the opposite experience with um, with Mike Tobias, and that's why MTD went on my list. But Ken Smith did as well. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, MTD yeah, yeah, yeah. on my list as well. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So we've got Federa, F Base, Ken Smith, MTD. I love F MTD. They're a more like, I would say more like Federa, but um, they they do a whole thing where they're sort of like mix up all of the different woods the and woods. stuff like that. Yeah, Mike right. and Daniel have got this amazing approach and great sort of like, um, I guess sort of like experience that they've built up around sort of like how to make MTDs sound very different using the different woods that they use. Anyway, so MTD and like Justin Reigns, also one of my favorite players, plays an MTD and sounds killing on it. He's and then amazing. finally, of my favorite classics, Alembic. I hate you. Alembic. Alembic. Alembic, dude. Yeah. Yeah, Alembic. I've just never had a, I've never really had an experience with I've Alembic. I've never even played one. I've never even played one, but I love Jimmy Johnson and therefore I love Alembic. <laughs> love by association. Okay. Then we've got the boutiques, the FS, I mean, the boutique FSOs, fender shaped objects. I'm going to go Lull. I'm going to go Sadowski. I'm going to go Alinto. I'm going to go Oliva Capolo. And I'm also going to go wildcard Nordstrand because Nordstrand jazz bases and P bases, yeah, right. even though like you can get them on reverb for a steal, they are badass. They're my five boot uh, fender shaped objects. And finally, the Brits. You yeah. hold, stop, <laughs> stop. <laughs> The Brits. Because essentially, stop I'm before stopping. you. I, I'm happy that you're going to go down the Brits because you're going to say all the amazing British builders. And I've I know what you're going to say, but I, yeah, I know what they are too. But I hate that you just named essentially all of the FSO companies. <laughs> like, you're like, fender shaped objects. We'll just name them all. Dude, I had to leave Alinto out of mine yes. because I thought I only had five. Yeah, you had five. Total. Per category. You just didn't, you, know, you need to dig a bit deeper with the questions. <laughs> Dude. Oh my God. Okay. The Obviously the Linto is in the. I've got two Brits. I've got two Brits. I've got Overwater. Because yep. if, I wasn't, if I wasn't for Overwater, I wouldn't be playing bass actually. Um, there's a whole story there, but I love these basses. They're absolutely amazing. And obviously, I think that you left them off your list, but I'm going to go. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Oh. Do, do you have one there? No, yours is at home. I'm going to pull mine up right here. <laughs> yeah, I of think Wall, Wall obviously deserve love. And I've got one for my sort of like wild card. I have got this. Mane. Wait, are this, they UK? Italian, actually. No, I've got one wild card. This is my European wild card. That's a, like a separate list. <laughs> oh my God. You're just grabbing all, just like, let, you may as well have just read the fucking list down, just read, dude. Yeah. Just read a list. <laughs> God, so this it's the made worst. In, made in Italy, <laughs> awesome bases. That's it, I'm out. <laughs> Hold, you didn't mention the, the uh, a couple of British companies though. You didn't mention Status. Oh, Status. Yeah. I don't know if they are boutique. Maybe they are. They did some what? really cheap instruments as well. Oh yeah, they did some really cheap instruments. So oh I think yeah, right. Some people let let them tell us in the comments. Tell you us. You didn't in the mention too. JD. 
again, I like, oh, maybe they are boutique. Maybe they are boutique. Of course they are boutique. Okay. I mean, that pink Mark King base. That, that is like, pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Holy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, but maybe that's it. Maybe you mentioned the other ones. Overwater think, wall. Yeah. We've got them all in. We've got them all in. Dudes, it's been <laughs> wild. Let us know in the comments. I'm sure that we just spread some vicious lies and rumors today or whatever, you know. Let us know in the comments what you thought of the uh, what have you thought of the the, the show. Um, again, we're giving away these bases, the one that Ian's holding right now, this beautiful green music man. We're also giving away a Lull IMA. We we're are. giving away the Jazz Bass Special. We're 1985. Giving Linto. We're giving away the F Bass down there. We're giving away more prizes than we ever, ever have before. Win a base, build a school, a dot com. Go there, sign up for free to win one of these incredible instruments and help us build schools in developing countries. And also, just like what I said before, man, if you consider subscribing to the SBL YouTube channel, you will be making not only our day right here, but you'll be making the entire team at SBL super happy. We've got a big, hairy goal, trying to hit 1.5 million subscribers this year, and we need your support to do so. So if we you sure enjoy do. the content... Just hit that subscribe button and we'll love you forever. Um, Ian, have you got any final thoughts? Any words of wisdom before we call it? So pissed at you for the list. So <laughs> pissed. <laughs> I knew. I knew. As I was like typing out like, my evil top plan. Five. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> make him say it, make him leave people out. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the bottom line for me is that you are confident and play the instrument that you want to play. It actually doesn't maybe matter as much as you think it does, but also be okay to bring something that you think fits the vibe, the style of music, right? If, now, if that's your six string bass, killing. If you feel like, ah, you know what? I should have a P bass, go for it. It doesn't mean you're a completely different player. It doesn't mean anything less, right? It's not gonna subtract from your skills or from your identity. It's only gonna add to it. So I think play the bass that you wanna play, read the room and enjoy the wide variety of instruments that are available to you at all times. Beautiful. That's the pod. See you in a bit. Bye. Take care, everybody.